So the next speaker is uh, Hong Tao Chen, and he's going to tell us about his work on understanding chromatin architecture and transcriptional regulation in 4D. Thanks, Julia. Uh, I'm Hong Tao from Princeton Physics. So the big question we're interested in is the dynamic structure of chromatins and the biological implications of the dynamics. But today I'm going to focus on a small topic of the big effort, so talking about a long-distance enhancer promoter interactions. So as we know, a typical metazone genome is composed of thousands of genes, and each of the genes is regulated by multiple, uh, multiple cis-regulatory cis elements. Uh, some are close to the transcription start site. We call them promoters. Some could be further away, for example, enhancers, uh, depending on the genes and also depending on the size of the genomes. So this distance could vary from tens uh, to hundreds and thousands KB. So an immediate question is how could enhancers that are located thousands of KB away from the promoter can find the promoter, can interact with the promoter in a specific way? So we're trying to uh, answer this question using Joseph Lambrio as a system. So this is everybody's favorite gene, even skipped. So it has seven stripes in, in the uh, blossoderm stage. And this pattern is regulated by, by uh, separate enhancers that are located within 10 KB from the transcription star side of Eve. Uh, but uh, as we know, for example, in a human genome, a typical enhancer promoter interaction occurs across hundreds or thousands of KB. So in order to mimic and study the long distance interactions, we're taking advantage of a piece of DNA next to the, uh, right next to the three primary enhancers of Eve, which is called HOMI. So why is it called HOMI? Because if you uh, copy this piece of DNA and paste it somewhere else along the same chromosome. These two homies, they can somehow interact with each other, and the interaction is able to bring the promoter of this reporter gene back home to the Eve locus. So in order to show this, uh, we just got some probes uh, from our neighbor, Sean, and <laughs> did this uh, uh, single molecule fish analysis. So, so here, uh, Eve is in red, Oh, Eve is in red and the reporter is in green. So there are two things you can see. First, all the green signals are within the red stripes. Outside the stripe, there's no green. So there's a strong indication that the reporters of the transgene, reporter of the, uh, uh, the promoter of the uh, transgene is under the regulation of Eve, uh, Eve enhancers, right? And the second thing is you can see not all the red cells has a green signals. So the green is more or like uh, a stochastic pattern. So this is what we think was going on here. So in the red cells where there's, where, uh, there's no green, right, the EV enhancers are not able to interact, to genetically interact with the like Z promoter, but one, somehow the EV enhancers can find the promoter of the, of the reporter like Z is activated. So I, I, I drew it here like that, but actually we don't know even this kind of physical inter interaction exists, right? So we know there's a genetic interaction, but this physical interaction, if it, if it exists or not, we don't know, right? So even if it exists, right, we don't know how long uh, this, uh, how long does, does it take to, 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 to form this structure and how long this structure stays, right? We don't know any of the dynamic properties of the system. So in order to study the dynamics of the system, so this is the first thing we did. Using, using CRISPR, we can insert some uh, like 24 MS2 stem loops at the endogenous EU promoter. So basically what you see here is the endogenous Eve pattern in life. So, uh, this is how the MS2 system works. So in case you don't know, um, we inserted the stem loops under the regulation of the promoter. Once the gene gets transcribed, each nascent RNA is gonna carry uh, the stem loop at the five prime end. And also in the embryo, we provide uh, the MCP, which is the stem loop binding protein tagged with the blue protein. Uh, so that, that's, that's, uh, that's the spots you see here. 
right? So basically, qualitatively, this is Eve, and we did some calibration, we did some fish calibration, quantitatively, this is Eve. And the second, we're using a, another stem loop system called PP7, so this is orthologous to the MS2, so we can use the PP7 to mark the promoter of the reporter, sorry. Uh, so basically, this is a live version of the fish, fish picture I showed you two slides ago. So you see the basically the same thing, right? Uh, red signal, they're all within the blue stripes, right? And also, uh, the red signal, they kind of overlap with blue, right? But still, we don't know where this locus is when the red is not there, right? We need a way to visualize the physical position of this piece of DNA. So that's why we introduced a third marker, which is green here. So we borrowed the par ABS system from bacterium. So basically, we can light up this piece of DNA, uh, and this is transcription independent. So in each nucleus you see here, right, there's a green spot. And then things become very interesting and clear here. So for example, in this one, you see the red is activated, right? The, the transgene is activated, then, then the blue and green, they overlap, right? But where you see uh, blue and green are clearly separated, you never see red. So it seems like it's necessary for, for, for it's like the overlapping of green and red, a uh, green and blue is necessary for the activation of red. And of course, we did some serious quantification. So these are just three nuclei from the previous movie. And these two panels are, are synchronized. So the right, oh, the panel on the right here shows the distance between the blue and the green spots as a function of time. And you see three traces. The red line is pair three where the transgene is activated, right? And the dashed line, the two dashed lines are pair one and two where you don't see red. So clearly, you can see the distance when the blue green distance when the red is on is shorter, when, when, uh, shorter than where red is not on, right? All right, so we can, those, those are three nuclei, we can do much better statistics, we can do all the statistics. We can do CTC on, on all the traces. So basically, this is th just the blue-green uh, distance. When the red is not on, it's about 800 microns. Uh, so sorry, eight, 800 nanometers. But when the red is activated, right, this distance becomes much shorter. It's, it's about 500 uh, nanometers. And the difference is significant. And also, we have three colors, right? We can measure the distance between the red and green. And this is about 300 nanometers, even shorter. That's because red and green, they're always physically together, right? But they're physically together, but why they're not zero? Uh, because I was cheating. So you cannot compare uh, apples with oranges because they're different color pairs, the different floral force. Although I, I, I align my microscope very carefully, there are uh, chromatic aberrations and all kinds of aberrations that can mess up with the result. So, we need to control where, red, where blue and green are physically together. So this is a control. Uh, uh, this is not bees. This is a real embryo where we can put a green marker and a blue marker together. So, so this is our zero, right? You can see uh, box two is very close to box four. And so you can see it from the cumulative distribution function, right? There's a significant difference between the red and the, the, the solid line, which is uh, box one. And also, there's no difference between the dashed line and the red line. So all the movie I showed you is for this locus, right? The transgene is at minus 142 kb from the Eve promoter. And actually, I created a, a series of distances. I can put the, trans, the, the transgene at different locations and to analyze, to measure the distant dependence, right? So which I'm going to show you is the result from these five lines. Uh, I, I have all the data now. So if you're interested, I can talk to you later. So uh, these are movies from three different distances, 47, minus 142, and uh, three, three mega, minus three mega. So there are two things you can see from here. If the distance is very long, if the distance is 3.3 3 .3 mega bases, you don't see red, right? Because they're too far. It takes time for the green to find the blue. And uh, and also, when you get closer, right, you get more and more red, 
right? And then second thing is you can see a clear separation between blue and green here, right? Because like, the, the genetic distance is long, and the distance gets shorter and shorter when you get close to the promoter. And we can, some, we can do some serious analysis. Um, actually, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the physics part of this, so I just want to give you some intuition. So this, again, this is the distance between the blue and green spots at a function. This is the physical distance uh, between the blue and green spots as a function of the genetic distance. Or, yeah, I don't know what you call it. It's just the, how, how many kilo bases. Right? And again, there are two things. So first, if the red is not on, you can see the, the, the blue and green distance scales up with the, the genetic distance, right? And we can use a, a worm-like chain model, some kind of physics model, to describe this very well, all right? And what is more interesting is when the red is activated, right, the distance becomes much shorter. Because I don't have a red for the 3.3 mega, so there's no, no spot here, sorry about that. So, but you can see this is both necessary and sufficient, all right? And the panel on the right, you can see this is the fraction of a nuclear. This is basically the number of red, right? Because if there's no blue, you don't have red. The enhancer is not working, right? So I normalize the number of red uh, by the number of blue, right? And I plot this as a function of the genetic distance. And you can see at 3.3 mega, you don't have red, but when you get closer and closer to the promoter, you have more and more red. It makes sense, right? because the imaging time for all these embryos is the same. It's 40 minutes, right? 40 minutes before uh, gastrulation. So right, if it's very far away from each other, right, it, takes much lo it takes longer time, right? So, but if you're too far, if you're 3.3 mega, the time is not enough to get even one, one uh, touch, right? All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll conclude with these three questions. Actually, it's not the conclusion, it's just the start. So uh, uh, the first is a chromatin looping necessary for transcription activation. I think from what I've shown you, the answer should be a definite yes. Right? You see the physical interaction is necessary and sufficient for the activation of transcription. And then what are the quantitative parameters of the, of the long range uh, interactions. So this is some, something I haven't shown you here, but actually I have all the results, like the dwelling time, like the K on and the KK off, so we can model it perfectly. And also, this is just a synthetic loop, right? What happens to endogenous gene? What happens to the endogenous promoter interactions? So we can use the same method to label endogenous enhancers and endogenous promoters and see if the parameters we obtained from this uh, synthetic interactions can be applied to the endogenous genes. Actually, uh, we're, almost, we're almost there. All right, so with this, so I, I want to thank Thomas. Uh, I, 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 I want to thank the Gregor Lab, all the Gregor Lab, and also uh, I'll, I'll thank Miki Fujioka from uh, Thomas Jefferson University for doing a lot of transgenics with us. Uh, and also I'll thank all these labs for, 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 for the help. Yeah, with that, I'd like to take any uh, question. Nice talk. Thanks. Uh, is the uh, activation of the red dependent of the orientation of HOMI? It does. We have a control. We have five controls, actually. So one of it is uh, HOMI deleted or replaced by some neutral DNA. And the second control is we flipped the, the homie. So if we flip the homie, we don't see red anymore. So the pairing of homie is orientation dependent. Oh. But they do pair together because we can measure the distance. But it's just, there's no red. So you see the blue with the green. Right. Yeah. I was wondering if the homie elements can ever find each other if they're on different chromosomes. You're talking about transvection. Yeah. It's possible. So we're looking at the late embryos now. Because in this state, transvection mechanism is not there. Yeah. Does, your, does your data give you any uh, information about where these are coming together in the nucleus as a three-dimensional space? This is a great question. So, so far, I don't have a very good measure of the nuclei shape, the shape of the nuclear. So, but my intuition is from very, cr like, rough analysis, 
this thing ha has to happen at the edge of the, the nuclei, right? But it, it's very rough, so, yeah. Hello. Thank you for your interesting talk and the nice way you consolidate the data. <laughs> I was actually um, curious to know if you have thought of super resolution imaging to lift your data from you know, showing proximity to really physical interactions? Right, so all the data we took here is from Confocal. So actually, uh, we're building up a, a bezel lattice light sheet microscope so to fulfill the, the, the super resolution need. So then, the, the, so the time resolution we got here is about uh, 20 seconds, so not very good. But for the fast modes, right, we need the resolution like uh, of about like 0.5 seconds, or at least 0.5 seconds. So, which we, we're going to have in maybe two or three months, so when the scope is done. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>